All right, welcome everyone. July, Title Tuesday. It's a 10 round Swiss for Title Chess players. The time control is three minutes plus two second increments. I'm your host, Grandmaster Eric Hansen. Glad to be back. And uh, we are following top seed Hikaru Nakamura uh, today. Round one, he's playing an FM from, I think that's Barbados. Yay, got it right. His opponent hasn't moved yet. There we go. Got it ready. Um, let me know in the chat if there's a player you want me to keep an eye out on. But the main superstar in the pre-registered list is, is uh, Hikaru. Although in Title Tuesday, lots of upsets happen. First few rounds, remember the time controls three minutes plus two second increment. It means it's not about flagging. You do got to get good positions. You get a winning position, you have enough time to convert. Um, so it's, it's about good chess for the most part, good speed chess. Some other notable games uh, that are other notable players. I think I saw uh, Dmitry Andrekin playing, Gregory Oparn. Lots of strong Russian players tend to play this event. Blitz chess is big in Russia. All right, pretty, pretty simple development for white here. Black's position is okay, and Naka just wants to, just wants to play a game of chess. It looks like. One thing about Hikaru is he tries to put a lot of pressure on the clock, so even a five or ten second time advantage can quickly turn into a, a minute, and then the blunders happen. I am uh, reading comments on chess.com slash TV and twitch.tv slash chess when I have some time. For the most part, we're going to st uh, stick to one game at a time unless something crazy is happening. So it's a 10 round event, probably run a bit over two hours. And uh, well, I mean, my prediction, I think Hikaru is going to win because he just beat me up a couple days ago. So I'm always biased. I'm just biased. People who beat me, I need to predict that they're going to win the event. Otherwise, otherwise, I need to save face. This is a bit of a, what happened here? He gives up the bishop pair. Okay, he had to. And he plays c5. Of course, the idea here might be to play a3 and try to keep that bishop offside. One thing black has to solve here is his bishop on b7. I'll tell you, black's position is completely fine uh, right now. But what's concerning is he's down, down a minute on the clock. Queen e7, tricky move, a move like rook c1 could might be met by bishop a3, kicking the rook out and maybe uh, going for c5. Is he going to do it? Bishop a3, uh, bishop a3, c6, some, some complications over here. Ooh, e5. Okay, I mean, this game is heating up. If black plays quicker, uh, I can tell you, I like his position. He's got two bishops, he's got a nice pawn center. I mean, what's there not to like here? It's, it's really the time that I'm worried about. Uh, bishop a6, maybe, maybe he should have kept the bishop with bishop c8, but okay, black's position is still very okay, I don't think, he's, knack is taking on a4, rook a8 is going to happen, I wonder what his idea is, because that is not, this is not a great structure for white, you do have a passed pawn, but black's rooks are ready to play against that. Uh, also from the U.S., Daniel Naroditsky is playing in the event. He's highly rated in blitz, generally a contender. I think Akshat Chandra, a lot of the young American players. I mean, it is 1 p.m. Pacific, so it's a pretty ideal time for us in North America. It is evening for the Europeans. I don't know. What about you guys? When do you play your best chess? In the evening, in the afternoon, in the morning? Or never? Uh, this position, definitely, definitely white is starting to take over here. Which is, there's a little bit of an exchange. E4, blocking the pawns. And now I think, I think Nak is doing quite okay. He's up a minute and a half. I'll put it this way. It's, uh, you just can't take a huge time, time uh, deficit against Hikaru. He's going to punish you for that. But uh, if you're white here, you want to get rid of this rook on A4. 
so that you can push your past eight pawn and just leverage that. Black's gonna have to focus on stopping the pawn rather than maybe playing against the queen. The nice thing about this queen on b3 is it can quickly swing over to g3 in case black ever tries to set up mating uh, threats. So queen, oh, okay, g3 also. Apparently Danny's also playing the chess.com VP. So we'll have to spec him at some point as well. But here I'm just expecting time to be the deciding factor. You don't need to win on the board. Time counts as well. He's gonna go for the back rank. Knight takes, oh, oh, knight f6 is a threat. Is he gonna see knight f6? Knight f6, fork, fork. And he falls for it. Now, I mean, when you're under 10 seconds, it's inevitable that uh, a blunder is going to happen. And a pretty smooth victory for Hikaru. Didn't have a great position, but he doesn't need a great position to win. He needs, he just needs some activity and some time on the clock. All right, who are we going to follow next? We're going to follow um, a Russian player here playing a rook end game. These guys are in a rook end game, and they have like two minutes on the clock. So they rushed into this. They're already on move 63. And this is a dead draw. So are we going to see Black squeeze some water from stone here? Because this, this is so drawn. Even if White was missing the spawn on d3, it would be a draw. I, I'm really curious if Black's going to continue playing or, or, or just say, okay, you, you earned a draw here. Myself, I would play 10 or 15 moves, see if they blunder. If they don't, okay, I'll probably concede a draw. Unless it's a must-win game. But remember, it's a 10-round event, and if you start off badly, it's not the end of the world. You can catch up. We call that a Swiss Gambit. You get a few easier pairings. Your tie breaks aren't great, but you can definitely sneak in. It's happened before. Okay, now they're going to agree to a draw, right? Right? Guys, agree to a draw? Rook against Rook? Rook f5. I just want to show the conclusion of the game. There we go. A nice professional draw, rookie six, pinning the rook and a draw. All right, so that's an upset. That is an upset. And we're gonna move on to another board. Uh, former Women's World Champion Alexandra Kosteniuk is playing as well, that's a big name. But I'm gonna jump over to board three right now. And black here, his username is Vladimirovich. That's Dmitry Andraken. He's been a world championship candidate. He's a super grandmaster. I think, yeah, definitely one of the top speed chess players in the world. And he plays quite a bit. I think he's won this before. He's one of my favorite players. And in this position with these connected pawns and 50 seconds on the clock, looks like he's on his way to win. I mean, generally, maybe round three, you're going to get GM on GM action. That's when you know things are serious. The top seeds start playing each other. I haven't checked how many people are playing, but I'll run by a couple more things, guys. First place is 500 American dollars. You get cash prizes all the way up to fifth place. And the top stream, if anybody's streaming this, gets a uh, hundred. So some prizes. They're not playing just for us. They're actually playing for money as well and uh, yeah smooth win there i am watching this game because the player playing white is a very good friend of mine elias usadek national master from canada playing against uh grandmaster ibarra from spain who's finished in the top three many 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 times the question here is can you get the pawns pushed before black's king comes and blocks them so it's a bit of a counting game one move there one move there one move there and it looks like black's king is right in time to stop that pawn from reaching the seventh doesn't mean doesn't mean uh, white has to do that but uh it's really going to be a race here if you can get this pawn to the seventh this game over that rook gets kicked out of uh its position and white can queen Black's king is coming. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is probably going to be a draw. King against pawn. Rook takes a7. 
So even though a draw would be a great result for White, I think he was looking for a little bit more. And he's keeping the rooks on the board in case a blunder happens. Generally, the, the only way a pawn is beating a king here is, uh, is when white's king is in front of its own pawn. But the king is cut off. This king is cut off. You want this king to support that past b pawn. But that is not happening. White has offered two draws so far, but what happens in blitz is you don't always know when your opponent offers a draw. You move so quickly, you just miss it. Rook check. No. Is he trying to flag? I don't know what's going on here. Black is not accepting draws. Everyone has a different opinion on what's fair in blitz chess, right? Rook against rook. Uh, Amon Hamilton is also playing from the same building. So we might check up on him. Hopefully he starts off well. I, I can't watch this anymore. This is going to be a draw. If it's not a draw, I'll eat my words. Who else should we follow? Uh, if you want to follow the tournament, guys, go to chess.com uh, slash live. you got to log into the live interface. And you have to click the tournament tab and look for Title Tuesday. This is the first month, as far as I know, that this is now sponsored by Masterclass. So I think it's called the Masterclass Title Tuesday. But there you see a list of players and standings. you got to go on the live interface. Here we have an interesting endgame. It's two bishops against the knight. I think it's actually winning. I think you can chase the knight away. But uh, I don't have these things memorized. I think two bishops does beat a knight. Two bishops doesn't beat a bishop. But against the knight, I think there's a way you can hunt the knight down and trap it. I might be, I might be, I might be off. With six seconds, no, that's very hard. But at the same time, black could also flag. Oh, this this knight's starting to run out of real estate. This knight's starting to run out of real estate. And there we go. And there we go. He hangs the knight. He hangs the knight. That was a blunder. But now it's two bishop two bishops against the king. Let's see that technique. We're gonna have a. We're gonna have. Uh, not an upset. The higher rated player was actually playing white here, Donchenko. And he's going to show us how to mate with two bishops against a king. It's going to force the king into the corner. Yes. Force the king into the corner. Bishop here and bishop here is mate. Good technique. So the grandmaster technique prevails. It's it's one of the easier checkmates. I suggest practicing it at home. Even if you mess it up, you can generally find your way and, and deliver the checkmate. And I think that almost concludes round one. Oh, look at these guys. They're still playing. They are still playing. What's wrong with these guys? These guys, it's, they they have extra, they put extra points on the rooks. I mean, a rook against a rook, I would always take a draw. Unless I think my rook is like somehow, somehow a special rook. A buffed up rook. But uh, after round one, I mean, most people, uh, most of the top seeds did emerge victorious. And that's why we're still following Hikaru on board one. He's playing against a 
Dutch FM Mokerslag. Who's that? Simon Tramelant. I'm not sure who that is, but he has a pretty high blitz rating. And he won his first game, and they're playing one of the sharpest variations in chess. The Poison Pawn variation. I don't think I'd play this for either side in blitz. I'd be worried about losing in the opening. But uh, Hikaru plays it all the time. Um, he's been playing it in classical tournaments. He plays it in blitz. He's very confident with his preparation. At the same time, if he messes up his... If you can't remember the theory here, you can lose right out of the opening. This is one of the most dangerous lines in chess. And he has lost against a couple players in the past. Okay, black takes a pawn. He wants the castle. He just wants the castle next move. White has to prevent that. Black can manage to trade off the greens. I mean, you're just up a pawn. So he's already up 40 seconds. Clearly his opponent doesn't remember or doesn't know all the theory here. And uh, this is just good for Hikaru. He's just going to castle next move this queen. Well, wait a second. What happens here? Knight takes e6. With queen c4, bishop c4. Uh, knight takes e6, bishop e6, queen e6, queen takes c3, check. The knight is hanging. That was the tactic. Important, very important. Sorry guys, I'll turn my phone off. No tinder, no tindering during chess. That's a rule in the chess bra cave. Not actually, but maybe I should enforce it. Anyways, black has managed to kick away white. He's got a castle, he's got a lot of juicy squares here. And, uh, I mean, this is going to be a smooth win for Hikaru. Bishop, a Bishop h4, deflecting the queen away from c3. Castles, and I'm up a pawn. I mean, I, I wish I was up a pawn here. Hikaru's up a pawn. He's got better king positioning. He's up a minute and a half. This, this, is, this is a wipeout. This is a wipeout, guys. This is a wipeout. This king is safe because this bishop can't really get access on this long diagonal. Otherwise, I don't really see how you pressure that, uh, that king on g8. How do you see the standings? Well, you uh, go to chess.com slash five. On the top right, you look for the tournament tab. I think it has a ribbon as a representative or a trophy. And look for Title Tuesday. Hey, D. Grayville, how's it going? I'll, I'll tell you from personal experience, you can't get down to under a minute while Hikaru has, has three minutes here. This is, this is just bad news. G5 wins a piece. He can just take here. This is game over. Yeah, a piece up. E4 is hanging. These knights defend each other. There's no. E there's not even a check. You don't even have a hope. No hope. Bishop E7. Okay, knight here works. Bishop here. Potentially kick the queen out. This is Successful opening by by Nakamura. White did not get any initiative. Got kicked back right away. And uh, Hikaru is moving on to 2 out of 2. I really think he's a heavy favorite, um, obviously. But uh, he, he's lost in the early rounds multiple, multiple times uh, this year even. And this start has been very smooth. So if you're 
Nakamura fan, I think you got to be pretty happy with what you're seeing. He's not spending a lot of time. When he's not spending a lot of time, it means he's comfortable with the positions he's getting. People blunder and spend time, and they don't know what they're doing. He's getting very easy to play positions. Maybe F3. He's pushed the pawn. Okay, trading also works. Trading works. I'm a little confused by some of uh, Black's moves, but he's up so much time that I'm not sure it matters. Maybe just push the pawn down the board. Very smooth, yes, I'm saying very smooth. Push the pawn. Past pawns must be pushed. Okay, get the queens off first. I can't fault that. Push. Take. Win this bishop. I would just go for this bishop. You win this bishop, you queen. So maybe rook here or rook here. But uh, Hikaru's going to be up two pieces here. Soup Scythe says, Hikaru is, in my opinion, the best chess player. Better than Carlsen. What are your thoughts on that comment? And the rook is trapped. He leaves the bishop hanging because that bishop is trapping this rook from moving. Oh, that was a crush. Two minutes extra on the clock and a huge material advantage. Hikaru Nakamura moves to 2 out of 2, maintains pole position. And let's go to this next game. This is Dmitry Andrekin against Alexandra Kosteniak. Two strong grandmasters. I mean, she's a former Women's World Champion, and she's quite good at blitz. I believe there's a video on YouTube of Kosteniak beating Magnus Carlsen in blitz. I believe you can find that on YouTube. It's a well-documented game at the World Blitz Championship, so a very serious event. Here, unfortunately, she just went down, down three pawns with no real counterplay. Andrekin was the two to two. What's going on here? Who's getting checkmated? Looks like white's getting checkmated. King here, queen check, king here, queen check, I'll block and I'm up a full rook. I'll just block with my queen. Yep, up a full rook. Black is winning. And we have a Canadian on 2 out of 2. Once he cleans up this game. Rook h1 is a nice way to checkmate. King takes h1, queen f1 check. And queen takes g2. That would be a forced checkmate. He didn't play it, but the position is winning nevertheless. I'll just show that for people wondering. Check. King has to take. Check. King moves up. And mate. Amon! Oof. The next game is featuring a chess pro, Amon Hamilton. And he's on 101. He's playing a wonderful time. A very strong Vietnamese IM. You can tell by his blitz rating, which is over 2650. Higher rated than probably 90% of grandmasters on chess.com. Uh, but Amon is the one up a piece here. Time pretty even. Hamilton needs to start uh, getting a pass pawn or something. Because uh, with all the pieces on the board, even though he's, he's up material, it could be a bit chaotic. He, he needs to get control over the position. Maybe bishop b5. Okay, okay. He's, he's trying to get in there. Yeah. Oh. oh bishop, that was my move. I thought he slipped. There, he's one upon and he's got a pass pawn. So he's going to take on, on, on f5, he's going to play bishop e check, uh, e6 check, and he's just going to push this pawn down the board. I think Amon is on his way to winning the game. Okay, he played bishop d3 first, I would just push the pawn. Push the pawn. Bring the king in. I'm not guessing his moves very well. He blocks the pass pawn, and I think he is going to push the pawn, finally. He's going to bring his king to f5 and push. King to f5. King to f5. Or push. Your choice. Nice configuration here. Black cannot make any entry. Amon's going to move to 2 out of 2 here. 
2 out of 2. He's going to recycle the knight to f5. Recycle the knight to f5. Oh, okay, he takes the pawn first. Just, you know, take away all your opponent's pawns so you don't mess anything up. But uh, a big win for Amon. And that's an upset. Two out of two. So we got multiple Canadians with a perfect score. And we're going to hopefully uh, we see one of them play Naka next round. Good job, Amon. Let's check the remainder of the round. Here. Black's got two pawns and a bishop. A nicely anchored in bishop for rook. But this rook is cutting the king off and there are checkmate threats. So what does that mean? It means I like white because in blitz, king position is pretty hard to deal with. And uh, you got to always worry about checkmate. Hey, guard tiger. How's it going? Okay, that's good. That's good. White's pawn here has been captured. So if black trades everything, if white trades um, the rooks off, Bishop and two pawns against a rook should be a draw. This should be a draw. Rook here, rook a2. And then take the pawn. You can just take the pawn. Oh, maybe he's trying to win. Maybe he's trying to win, but uh, this is a draw. Barring a blunder. Amon is my favorite international master. He's very friendly for hanging a checkmate in 15 against me a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we're, no, we're known for, for, for that. That's why they say Canadians are nice. Okay, they finally agreed to a draw. Who's left? Who shall I follow? Oh, that game's done. Are there any games left? Okay, I'm going to give you guys the standings or summarize what's happening here. Uh, if I could see the standings. There we go. So, Nakamura's on 2 2. Daniel Naradetsky, Sergei Azara from Belarus, Dmitry Andrekin, Anton Kovalya from Canada, Yakov Norowitz, Aksha Chandra, both of the US. Indian prodigy, Nihal Serene. 12 years old, he's an IM. He's on Twitter too. We might have to follow him. Oof, lots of names. Rauf Mamadov from Azerbaijan is. Oh, there are a lot of good Blitz players who have all started off with a perfect score. The total, how, how many people are playing in this Title Tuesday? Looks like there are around 100 and 140, 150 participants. Some people get disconnected or have withdrawn, but a pretty large event. So a lot of people still on Twitter too. Um, there's still one game going on, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the standings uh, with an actual visual representation. So how do I do that? Yes, this is how we're going to do it. There we go. I'll keep this. I'll bring this up occasionally. Those are the top five guys with two out of two. Who's the number two person? His name, it says he's from Australia. Hana Pazoria. I'm not sure who he is. We're waiting for one final game to finish, but he's really high rated in Blitz. And he's on two out of two. All right, round three. Seven more rounds left. This is a 10 round event and probably the winning score is going to be something like eight and a half or nine out of 10. We got GM on GM action board one and that is a uh, former world number three, Jan Elvist. Uh, he's played for the US. He's from Estonia. I think he's back in Estonia now. 
and he's playing against Hikaru. And they've played before, I'm pretty sure, at the U.S. Championship. Oh, oh sorry, i got to close that. My bad. I won't do that again. Uh, I'll fix it. I will fix it quicker next time. Anyways, we got a dragon. H3, though. H3 chosen by Elvis. Not wanting... Wait, wait. No, not a dragon. It's a little bit different. Nakamura's going for the Night Orf. After H3, he's going for a dragon setup. But there's an in inclusion of H3 and A6. So it's not a standard dragon. Anybody knows who the number two guy in the tournament is? Hana Pazoria. I am very curious. This is like the Dragdorf a bit. The dragon and the knight of a hybrid. Mm, bishop b7, knight b d7. I like black's position here. And Naka is up 45 seconds. Knight d7, rook c8. I might even start sacrificing over here. Knight d7, rook c8. Oh, he's just going for material. A materialistic Matthew. Knight d5, I'm expecting. Maybe knight d5, knight takes e4. Can you just go pawn grabbing? And e5. Okay, this game is heating up between Elvis and Nakamura. Ignoring the threat of the knight, going straight for Black's king, trying to open up all the files. White's argument is that you are in no position to attack me while you are under underdeveloped, uh, and your king is stuck in the center. E5, and the idea is if you take here, maybe I can do a double attack on the queen and sneak right into the position with knight e6. Knight e6 looks lethal. Knight f5 is also attractive. So things are heating up here between Elvis, the underdog. He was world number three, but that was probably 25 to 30 years ago. I don't remember the exact rating list. So he's definitely the underdog here. He's relatively inactive as a player, whereas Hikaru is a speed demon playing all the time over the board and online. He's got speed as a clear advantage here, but let's see if the veteran still has some tricks. Maybe bishop c4. Maybe queen g7. I'll tell you what, I like white's position right now. I like white's position. I do not like black's king in the center. I don't think black has an attack. If queen b4, I put my bishop on b3. I disconnect the queen from that b2 pawn, and I say uh, white's king is safer. I'm starting to really like Elvis' position here at first glance. He's got to play quick, but this game is really heating up, and Naka might be punished for being a bit uh, ambitious uh, in the opening with his king in the center. Look, rookie one is a huge threat coming up. This position, uh, this, we, we're on the verge of seeing Nakamura lose here, guys. Knight b3 runs into queen takes a2. There are still a few tricks, but uh, this, this seems like a lost position if white finds the right combination. You can take here, play rook e1, but I can tell you something is off. There should be a knockout blow. Will Elvis see something? You can take here and play rook e1 if you don't see anything. But it's time to start hunting the king. Maybe rook e1 right away, ignoring the piece. Elvis needs to play faster. Okay, he's going for what I recommended. But he took too long to do that. He's still got a full minute. He's got increment. So nothing bad about him. Just, you know, if you're cheering for Elvis there, you know the way white's going to go down here. He's going to run out of time. And when you're attacking, you need time. I mean, you have so many options. It's easy to get overwhelmed. The ingredient here is stick to natural moves. Rook takes e7, bc3. Guys, we are going to see an upset on board one if Elvis can keep his composure. Why did he not throw in the check first? I have no idea. Why did he not take on e7 first? Can someone tell me why he did not take on e7? I am shocked. That's an intermezzo check. And then take back on c3, and Naka's position looks busted. Instead, maybe you don't even get access on the e-file. That's, that's shocking. What is going on here? Elvis in the tank here. In the tank. And you know what? After knight f3, I bet you Naka's going to play knight c6. Because he's got this queen a3 check. So d6 is actually protected through tactics. 
So even if knight b3, also d6 is protected. You got queen a3 check. Black, oh man. Elvis, down to 20 seconds. This is exactly what you're supposed to avoid when playing Hikaru. He, he gets good positions, but he also gets lost positions. But he's quick. So even in lost positions, he makes comebacks. You have to. You cannot let him um, get active counterplay when you are low on time. And this is what's happening here. The king has escaped. And I think I think here what's going on. Knight b6, knight c4. And he's going to try to checkmate uh, white. Knight c4 and queen b2 or queen a1. That's a mate. That's a mate. But really missed opportunities here. A lot of missed opportunities by Elvis. That has got to hurt. He's running his king out. He's running the king out, and he might have a point, but with two seconds on the clock, I'm not that confident. I don't think a lot of us are envious of being naked and having two seconds on the clock. Knight a5, protecting the mate on b7. He does have a few... few ooh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, and he flags! Oh, oh no. W White is threatening checkmate, but he's in check. He probably didn't realize that. You move the king over, and this is very close to a checkmate. At a minimum, this might just be a lost position for black. You're threatening rook b8 mate. Queen here looks like the only move, and I can just take with check. The king has to move over. I can take on e6 with multiple pieces. And that looks like it's game over to me. So Elvis flags in what looks like a winning position. Check. And knight takes e6 comes next. And oh no. Look at that. And we saw it coming too. We saw it coming. He was way too slow. A good game otherwise. Missed many wins. But Naka escapes in round three. Na Naka. Very slippery. But you know what? I'm not even sure that was slippery. I think White only had himself to blame for that. He missed rook takes e7, missed a few other moves, and most importantly, took way too much time. A good opening, a good attack, but uh, we saw the writing on the wall when he was under 10 seconds. So let's give a check. Yes. But this position, who's better here? You got the outside pass pawn? But you got your pawn on f4, which means black can take the second rank, which means white's king is actually a little bit less safe. I prefer black here. I want to. I prefer black. I think the the second rank is valuable. I would play rook d2, and he does rook d2 right in the nick of time. That allows the king to go f2. The king going f2 means it can help stop this pawn and just be a participant in the game. Excellent. Okay, so it looks like white is making making some good moves here. They're both under 20 seconds, both playing at the same pace. Um, oh, and this game looks like it's headed to a draw. This pawn's going to fall, and this pawn's going to fall, and it's going to be a symmetrical structure. Yes, okay, I think we're going to see a draw in this game. Uh, okay, no, black, the higher-rated player, is going to try a little bit more just because the king is offside. And what I missed is this move right here, that you were threatening this, this king is cannot enter easily. I did miss that uh, White's King does not have an easy way to safety. Still, with best play, this should be a draw. But okay, the higher rated player has a better position. He's going to try to milk this, and I don't blame him at all. F5 check, Rook check, and he's winning a pawn. Oh, oh, he's threatening G6. You can't stop G6. Who's going to win this? You cannot stop White from taking on G6. Black has to force a draw here, or his king on the side is the one getting mated. That's a serious turn of events. Rook takes g6. Either rook can do it. There's no way for black to stop that. Black is forced to go for repetition. There's no other checks, and I don't think you want to allow white to take here with check. All right. Who else is still playing? Ah... Amon Hamilton defending the chess prop pride. He's playing black against Hana Pazoria, the mysterious 
high rated grandmaster and this position is a draw but uh white is up a pawn black's got some nice light squared outposts i think this is just a draw amon's up on time he's gonna clinch it with knight f5 here winning a pawn or the bishop uh he might even play for more amon might play for more he's gonna flag him oh no almost almost flagged him white went dangerously close to flagging there and he offers a draw i think i'm Amon, is Amon going to try to flag with a tricky knight? What's going to happen here? F4, F5. He wants to play F4, F5. And it's going to be a draw. But uh, if anything, knights are better in time scrambles. And Amon has more time. So it's white who is happy to draw here. That's a pretty good result for Amon drawing the number two seed with black from a position of strength. So the games are getting super competitive and Naka is on three out of three, but his game out of all, all the games we've seen was the shakiest. Couple of games remaining. Let's bring up the standings for you guys. Where are the standings? Okay, standings, I'm gonna enlarge them and block my face, which you guys will appreciate. Look at that. Nakamura, 3 out of 3. Andrekin, 3 out of 3. 12 year old Indian international master Nihal Sarin, also on 3 out of 3. What a story. Grandmaster Belodu, 3 out of 3. I am Gina. Those are the top five. But I can tell you there's, um, there are quite a few more players with a perfect score. This game, we got a knight against a rook. Should be a draw. And I expect it to end like that. And as I told you guys, I'll fix the board for the rest of the stream. So I was on top of that. Round four, title Tuesday. Nakamura still on a perfect score after surviving a big assault last game. Here he is playing white against Ukrainian Grandmaster Yuri Solodovnichenko. We have some other big matchups as well. But after that last game, we're going to see is Nakamura going to continue playing provocatively or is he going to go back to quick, quick, quick good chess, but not with a huge amount of risk. And as we see, he started here with a Knight f3 and b3, sort of a ready Larson uh, hybrid. That's not a very sharp position. He's comfortable with it. And uh, he's. I don't see Hikaru getting into any opening trouble this game like he did last round. As you can see from the start, Nakamura's already built up a 20 second time advantage. He doesn't have a necessarily better position here, but that, that oh, those seconds count. And uh, if you want some proof of that, watch my matches against Naka. Every second counts. <laughs> Although they do have increment. They do have increment, but still. We have... Well, this is a fairly symmetrical position. I'm not that excited yet. Let's see what happens. I'm very, very willing to switch to another game, depending on the action. But uh, right now, uh, I'm seeing pieces of getting traded off. I know Black is uh, a solid Grandmaster. He's not going to take a lot of risk here. And he's playing Black. Why should he? So he's going to stick with the principled moves. Challenge the center, develop the rooks, trade pieces, and uh, try to hold Naka down. But some big stories I think we probably should follow. Uh, Nihal Serene, 12 years old and <laughs> tied for first. When I was 12 years old, what was I doing? Oh no. 
I can tell you when I was 12, I was 1500 rated in chess. So uh, I, the only only uh, tournament I would qualify for would be Untitled Tuesday, which is now they're running a tournament on chess.com called Untitled Tuesday. If you want to play yourself, I think whether somebody is organizing it on behalf of chess.com, but I know there's an, an initiative for untitled people to play while well, I was in that category, untitled. All right, let's see where the magic comes from. He's up a full minute. He's got great bishops, a great knight. He wants what black to keep, uh, take on f3. Why? Because I want this rook to go on d1. So I need to move the queen out of the way either way and uh, and then prove that rook on, on f1 and put pressure on this queen. Black, as I said, trading off pieces, being being solid. I, I'm pretty aware of these these players, and uh, let's see, let's see if Naka outplays Solodovnichenko in this end game. But you know what? I'm gonna exit that game. I'm gonna be controversial, and I'm gonna follow 12 year old Indian international master Nihal Serene, who is playing down a piece here. Uh, he's got a past pawn. He, he can dream. He's got a, a past a pawn, so he's got dreams here. He's down a piece, a full piece, a full piece, meaning like not even a pawn because black's got four on three on the king's, uh, king side and he's up on time. So this is actually just over, unfortunately for Nihal Serene fans. You can keep dreaming of that pawn, but it's blocked and this queen is a great blockader because with that bishop, it actually is effective and has its own threats. I'm expecting this game to finish up shortly, but we'll watch because maybe something wild will happen. Let's see. Let's see if a blunder happens. And Black offers a queen trade. Can I put sounds on? Do you guys want to hear sounds? Do you want to hear the piece sounds? I can do that. Okay. I have a request for you guys to hear my computer. I have to turn off a few things first. So you, so cover your ears. No? Okay. People people said no. Never mind. I, I'll put it on very low. No, never mind. People are, people are not... Uh, not in favor of that. Okay, well, this one, the chance, I can say one thing, this is the wrong pawn. So Nihal Serene is hoping uh, black captures on h5 because he does not have the right pawn to queen on h1, which means he has wrong chances. So he's strong some maturity here, trying to go for a draw, down a piece. Okay, well now, there goes that dream, because this pawn can always queen. No, now, now I'm... Well, the thing is, you, you can't win this pawn. What's interesting about this is black really needs to use the king, because this rook will never win this pawn. This bishop is on a dark square. So the most black can do is defend against that pawn, but can't get two attackers on it. The only way to get two attackers is to shuffle the king all the way down the board to b5, but how can you do that without losing this pawn? So th this game is more interesting than it seems. It's more interesting than it seems. There are still drawing chances for the young boy from India. He's got this Icelandic flag because I think he was playing in Iceland. Uh, I don't think he was adopted there or he still lives there. Like Maybe the flag hasn't changed. I'm, I'm pretty sure... He still represents India. So the ice, if the Icelandic flag is throwing you off, I, I think he does represent India. And it just he just played or made his account when he was in Iceland. And there we go. Black has to sacrifice the rook for the pawn. Sorry, it has to sacrifice the piece. And we have a drawn endgame here. 
So he, the kid, the kid draws down a full piece against a veteran grandmaster. This is a this is a textbook draw. That's pretty impressive. I, I gotta say that's pretty impressive. That shows you you shouldn't resign if if he didn't resign down a full piece against a grandmaster, then why should you resign in your games? So look at that. I like the spirit, and we're gonna watch this. We're gonna watch this till the end uh, to pay respect to that good effort by Nihal Serene. Holding fear down an entire piece for an extended period. Fear is not going to be happy with that. Failing to win uh, up a piece. So these two players move to 3.5 out of 4 in contention still. And now let's move back to our friend Hikaru. The friendly neighborhood Hikaru. And here he is in what looks like Probably a winning endgame because you can cut off the you can cut off, oh maybe king e6 no king e6 doesn't work if you can cut this king off and be up a pawn it might be good but I don't know how to arrange that so so pawn the problem is white needs a move here and white doesn't have any good moves king here rook takes pawn that's a draw king over this is a draw so Dobnichenko is going to hold Nakamura. He just needs to check from the back. Yes, and he's done so. This is a textbook draw, just like the last game. So we're seeing draws in round four. We're seeing the solid chess come out. And Yuri Solodovnichenko holds Nakamura. He's going to hold it. I'm very confident here. And if I'm, not, if I'm wrong, I don't mind being wrong. Uh, that will only make it more exciting. Then you guys can make fun of me. And then I have more fun. But this is going to be a draw, and uh, well, that takes Hikaru out of the perfect score. If you're going to take anything away from this uh, tournament, you better know how to draw a rook against rook and pawn when your king is in position uh, as the defender. It's a pretty basic draw, but it's good to know because it happens a lot. That's gonna be a draw. Let's 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 find Amon. Is Amon playing? Yes, he is. Oh, I clicked on the wrong. There he is. Oh, and right in time to see a Hamilton victory. A resignation right as we observe the game. Here he is playing up a rook, and his opponent resigns. So a Hamilton moves to three and a half out of four. He's gonna be on the top boards. Great performance so far. From the bearded fellow. Did Naka's game finish yet? Or are they dancing together? Okay, they finished dancing. This is a draw. Good stuff. And Hannah Pazoria from Australia. I think I know who it is now. Somebody gave me a tip. Somebody from Armenia gave me a tip. I appreciate that. I won't reveal their name. But uh, it is a strong, strong Blitz player. I know who it is. Somebody I'm quite familiar with. And here he is. We got a race. And black is up a pawn here. And his king is closer to supporting the pawn, the pass pawn. Queen f5? No, wait. Queen f5 is an illegal move. Sorry, guys. Guys, queen f5 is... You know what happened? I had a really late night last night. Fabiano Caruana visiting us in Canada. All blame goes to him for me making illegal moves and, and suggesting things like that. I didn't get enough sleep. The guy's rowdy, and and I didn't get lots of sleep. So, By the way, do you know what's great about online chess? You, you can't make an illegal move. In Blitz, in real life, you make an illegal move, you lose the game. So you guys are ve we're very fortunate that we play online, because otherwise, an illegal move, it just doesn't let you do it. But, but there's a lot of controversy. You make an illegal move in Blitz, you lose the game. So what's happening here? There's a little bit of lag in this game. Black is still up a pawn, but he's getting checked around the board. That sounds like a hockey thing. You do check people on, on the boards in hockey as well. So Black, what Black is looking for is to trade the queens off or to usher this pawn down the board 
with protection. Believe me though, it's hard to find protection when you are exposed like this. There's only one pawn and one queen. Now it's even material. This is probably headed towards a draw. What? And black flags? Is that the Australian internet? Or oof. Wow, that is very unfortunate. The person pushing the game, black was up upon just flags. Some, I'm not sure what happened there. Oof, I, that is unfortunate. He's been playing really well. Let's do a refresh. Let's do a refresh here. There's one final game there, but uh, we've got people dropping. Is that Australian internet? And this position, well, I can tell you that if anybody's going to win, it's black. But uh, with proper play, this is a draw. Australian internet feels bad, man. It's okay. If I went to Australia, I'd I try not to be on the internet too much. That's the place I really want to go to. And I'll try not to be on the internet there. Try to explore. Crocodile Dundee. So, let me bring up the standings, although this game will affect it. These players are both on a perfect score. Who's Jenna? Jenna. That's a classmate. Oh, no, it's... No. Guillermo Vasquez. I think he's an international master from Paraguay playing, uh, studying in the United States. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Stale matrix. Put the king in the right corner. Here are the standings. Oh, those are not the standings. Those are the standings. Uh, three players on a perfect score right now, including a candidate master. I don't know too many candidate masters. That's extremely impressive. Oh, something just happened in this game. A blunder. Look at that. What just happened here? The bishop loses. Oh, bishop c2. Let me exit this for a moment. Uh, exit that. That person, Azarov, moves to 4 to 4. Bishop c2 cuts the king off from being able to go to c2. So after rook e1 check, you lose material. Rook beats the bishop. And that's, yeah, that's the story of the day. All right, round four. We got four players with a perfect score. We're going to follow them. Naka is in trailing pack. Uh, so we are not going to follow him. Yet. We are going to follow... Uh, board one. Sergey Azarov, the guy who just won with the rook against bishop, playing against Grandmaster Belodu, who is Kirill Alexenko from Russia. As far as I know, he's a pretty young grandmaster. I think he's the reigning Russian bug house champion, if I'm not mistaken. I think I saw an article about that. So most likely, he's pretty good at uh, speed chess, variants, things like that. He's on 4-4. Four to four. He's playing Azarov from Belarus. Belarus. So we got an Eastern European matchup over here. These guys playing into the evening. That's actually when I play the best. I think for speed chess, I definitely play better at like 10 or 11 p.m. But besides the four people on four to four, we're in round five now. There's a massive group of players on three and a half out of four. So it's still anybody's ball game.
Somebody says show Naka, not these patsers. Ouch. That means I'm a patser as well. I guess I guess we all knew that. I'm following the guys who are winning the tournament. And what just happened here? Bishop h4, g3, and instead of moving the bishop back, he, he uses the fact that g3 exposes this rook to play bishop, to play rook b8, bishop b7, knight e4. I don't think this tactic works. I think, does it work? If this works, I'll be impressed. Queen g3, can you play queen g3, trade the queens off? Yes, queen g3 works. Trade the queens off, take back with the knight. Queen g3. Oh, maybe queen h6. Now this is getting very sharp. How many pawns does black have? Two pawns right now. Two pawns, but uh, I like the piece. In the middle game with lots of pieces on the board, I like the piece. Where is the music? People make fun of my music all the time. So I quit listening to music. The internet beat Eric Hansen. White's spending a lot of time here. And he finally decides to go for queen g3. Just what the doctor ordered. Knight g5. Black is down. A, two pawns is not enough for a piece. There is king position, yes. But white has active pieces and there's no more checks after knight g5. You take here. Take, take, take. Let me. Oh, it's not letting me take. But you get the point. Are they moving? Oh, he did play knight g5. He did play knight g5. I had to refresh. I wasn't sure if that was my move or his move. He played my move. He just took a lot longer. And as I said, after e takes f4, after queen takes f4, there's no checks for black, and you're down a piece. In a middle game, the piece is usually better. Pawns in the end game can be pretty lethal. But I'm going to favor the piece in these middle games. So just uh, Alexenko here needs to find some activity. He needs to find some compensation. He's got to go... Searching for compensation. These guys are t spending uh, a lot on individual moves. A little bit different than, than, than Naka, who likes to set a blistering pace and not necessarily play the best move or, or just search for the best move. He likes to just be very practical. These guys are trying to be precise Peters. And I can respect that. I can respect that. So some pressure. I mean, Black, Black's King has to stay on the king side because this rook on g1 definitely has some ideas. But, you know, after rook d8 stopping, I mean, I want a queenside castle. Without a doubt, I want a queenside castle, and I'll be happy. Uh, however, black can stop that with rook d8. I still might play rook d1 anyways and manually castle. That's right, rook d8. There might even be tactics. Knight takes e6. Probably works, actually. There's some weird tactics going on, but they all favor white. And I think we're going to say Sergei Zarov moved to 5 out of 5, which would set up a date with maybe Naka. We'll see. Which other games are going on? These guys are taking a while. Precise blitz chess. How's Hikaru doing? Whoa! Whoa. Okay, so black is up in exchange, but his king... Naka is trapped in a corner right now. He's being he's being put in a box. His opponent, Gudin from Croatia, is putting Nakamura in a box and trying to checkmate him.
But now he's down a rook, and there are some quick tactics here. Queen takes king up. Bishop takes c8. Pawn takes d6. How many pawns is that? That is three pawns, although a couple of these are weak. That's three pawns. Okay, now it's two pawns. This is good for black. All right. The question is, can white find a perpetual? But objectively speaking, not only is it just two pawns, but these are double isolated pawns. The worst kind of pawns you can find. So white's only hope here is a perpetual. Or somebody unplugging Nakamura's internet. I believe he's in Italy right now. So, you know, maybe the Italian internet. We'll see what happens. But no, this is, this is, well, wait a second. Putting your king here means this pawn might have a free lane. There might be, there might be some perpetual chances. Is this a perpetual? Queen check. The queen can't block. The queen can't block. Oh, the blunder. The blunder, guys. King e7. Nakamura. Puts the king on the wrong square. Queen b4 check. Hitting the knight. Giving a check. And now white is winning. The turnaround. Gudin is looking to eliminate Nakamura from tournament contention. He's giving a check. He's forcing the king to get away from the pawn. And this pawn is going to queen. This is all but over. No, this is dead lost. Nakamura is going down. The top seed is about to be eliminated from contention. Queen c5, you're up two pawns, your king is safe, this king is cut off. Oh, this, what a turnaround. And the comments are piling in the chat with people cheering. I love Croatia. Interesting. Interesting. Look at that. Look at that. King moves up, you're up three pawns now. Nakamura's drawing dead here. Giving a few spite checks, as, as they say, you know, you give a few checks before you resign. Uh, and that's what's happening here. So, Hikaru going down. And what can you say? The last three games, he scored one and a half out of three. He was dead lost in one game. They were shaky games. The last three games, he was held to a draw. And he, okay, this game he was doing fine, but still a bit shaky. Because, uh, so Nakamura... Gets kept down. He's on three and a half out of five. And this grandmaster, by the way, is Ivan Saric from Croatia. Their top player. He's beaten Magnus Carlsen in a classical game. Very, very good player. So, the problem is, it's a 10-round event and it's blitz. You lose early. Uh, sorry, you lose in round five. It's hard to catch up. If you're going to lose, you want to lose early. Let me refresh here. Oh. My refresh is stuck. That's not good. Let's try that again. There we go. Uh, let's bring up the standings. We still have a couple of games in progress. The game we were observing before. But the current standings show that we have a candidate master named Stefan with 5 out of 5. Maybe the world's strongest candidate master. I've never seen this before in Title Tuesday. We've seen super strong national masters in the past uh, in Title Tuesday, but I'm not sure I've seen such powerful candidate masters on 5 out of 5 against professional players. That is extremely impressive. Is that King's Crusher? Candidate master C. Stefan. Not sure. Anyways, who do you see as number two? Amon Hamilton. Four and a half out of five. You got Saric who just beat Nakamura. Is that four and a half out of five? There's a large group with four and a half out of five. Five or six players. But we've got a CM in first place. That's remarkable. And if he's from Romania, I might know him. I've been to Romania a few times. I'll have to look him up. Amon is drawing power from the beard. These guys played such a professional game. They spent time. They looked for precise moves. And in the end, they agreed to a draw. They just repeat moves. So they moved to 4.5 out of 5. They're in shared second. But the real story that, that I've completely missed, I really apologize to everyone. I, I did not realize we had such a strong candidate master. 5 out of 5. Romulus Christian Stefan is on 
five out of five. That must be the tournament of his life. We are gonna stop, drop, stop and drop everything and follow him from now on. He is the undisputed number one, but he's got five rounds to go. Five rounds to go to clinch this title Tuesday. Um, a big, big event. Last round was Nakamura losing, uh, blundering in a pretty decent position uh, where at least he was on the better side and losing. That was unexpected. Oh, there's still a few games going on. I was getting too excited there. So next round, we are going to be following the candidate master from Romania, who is on 5 out of 5 ahead of many super grandmasters in the field. But what we might see, what I hope, is we see Amon against him. Amon's on 4.5 out of 5, so he's in second. Once again, I'll put up the standings. In fact, I'm going to extend the standings for everybody. Those are the top 5 uh, right here. This is the top 5. But we have a lot of people chasing. A lot of people chasing. Um, Mui's back 26 is Grandmaster Raouf Mamadov, well-known uh, blitz player. Uh, we have quite a few IMs in the field. This looks like a tournament where people are trying to beat up GMs. 50% of the top 10, 60% of the top 10. Are not Grandmasters. Looks like they're... Uh, They're trying to get us Grandmasters back. They're eliminating us. I see far too many IMs there. I almost want to play myself. My job as a Grandmaster is to stop people from becoming Grandmasters. That's the process. And here, Andraken converts. Look at this pawn chain. Isn't this, isn't this beautiful? What a nice way to finish the game. Any games left? Let's refresh that. We're waiting for Stefan for round six, though. We've been watching Nakamura. We've seen Andrake in here. We've seen some world championship candidates. But one person we haven't seen is the first place player. Candidate master Stefan from Romania. And I'm really looking forward to seeing his game next round. These guys are dancing here. Um, one, I have a question. Is Big Mac in the tournament? The people's champ, Big Mac. I haven't seen him today. Can somebody let me know if Big Mac is here? For those who don't know, he was a superstar in a recent title Tuesday. I think he won down two queens, which is unprecedented in chess. But these guys are uh, doing something. Rating Schmading against Colombiano. These guys enjoy each other, you can tell. They're friendly. And they don't want to take each other's pieces. But finally, it was a draw. And here we go. Round six, title Tuesday. 50% of the tournament's done. And in first place, after five rounds, candidate master Stefan from Romania. He's playing the guy in second place, Sergei Azarov who's had a pretty solid event, started off 4-4, four four and he drew Alexienko last round. This is going to this is gonna be a big one. 2,300 against 2,700. Who are you rooting for, the underdog? Or the professional? Why am I not playing, guys? I am the commentator. Well... Technically, I'm the commentator. I'm not sure how you describe what I do. Maybe just blabbering, but uh, I, I can't commentate and play. Stefan playing a4 here. So we've got a very conservative King's Indian attack, but a pretty conservative setup. Not looking to have any tension uh, uh, from the opening. 
looking to quietly develop his pieces, and uh, looking to outplay his more experienced opponent in the middle of the game. So a4 and e4. Not very confrontational, but uh, he's playing white, and I like the setup. I like the setup. It's flexible. He doesn't risk getting caught in theory. Uh, it's, yeah. But uh, let's see what's going on here. He, he's playing pretty quickly. Uh, definitely everybody who's doing well in the tournament so far probably has been uh, utilizing pretty successful time management. Time management is a big part of Title Tuesday. h6 and bishop back so is this going to be a weakness or is this a gain of a move white is just trying to pick spots here maybe queen c1 but after queen c1 king h7 what's your next target here i am not sure the thing is ta tactics can come from space and white is not pursuing any space here He's happy with his pawns like that. Black is also using a bit of a hedgehog setup. A6, B6, D6. Not that easy either. Okay, we got an exchange of pieces here, which means the C files opened up for black. I expect rook C8 to be played pretty soon and maybe some operations on the C file. Queen C7, similar idea. Where is white's idea coming from, guys? He's got H6, but that's well protected. He's shuffling his queen. I don't quite understand Stefan's moves. But he's up on time and he's in first place, so who am I to question him? Who am I to question him when he is winning the tournament? He doesn't have any weaknesses, that's one good thing about White's position, but but I, I can't, you know, I have to say this looks like a very balanced position. Space is around equal, development is around equal. Um, the C file, I like the C file for black, but I'm not sure it's enough. I'm not sure it's enough. So let's envision a trade here. I can play rook c1 and play c3 myself. It's, it's, this is looking like a very solid game. Let's take a pause from candidate master Stefan, if you guys will afford me that privilege. And let's watch Amon, since I haven't actually watched his games too much. Oh, 30 seconds to 2 minutes and 50. What is going on here? That is the worst time situation we have seen today. 30 seconds to 2 minutes and 40, and he's down in exchange in a pawn. Something has hap something happened in the opening here. Yes, there are some tender dark squares around Black's king, but this bishop needs to get on the diagonal or get on h6, and it's not easy. But it's an exchange in a pawn in two minutes. This looks lost for Amon right off the bat. Look at this time situation here. He's going to require a blunder or some really, really solid nerves to turn this one around. The good news for Amon, he's got two bishops. It's an open position. Queens are on the board. You keep the queens on the board. Keep the tension. Um, it's not easy for black to trade off pieces. So there are still... Possibilities of blunder. He's shifting the rook to a5. I like this. The rook can't go to c7 because of our great bishop. What's black trying to do? Trade off pieces. Dry the position out. Bishop e2. Okay, that works as well. I'm a little bit concerned about this move. Getting in your face. Knight d3. Maybe it's not a big deal. And Amon wants to recycle that bishop to b3. B3, he wants to improve all of his pieces. Oh, this is a good move, threatening h4. We don't want to play h4 ourselves because we allow knight g4. Amon goes for the pawn. Bishop bishop here doesn't work because of knight d3. Uh-oh. I think that was a mistake. Uh-oh. This actually is really bad now. You have to give up your good bishop and your king is in a tough position. Queen e3 is possible here, although we have bishop b3 there. Queen here, even more accurate. Threatening queen g3 and rook e1 mate. That should be game over. Amon just... The opening. The opening really got him there, both on the clock and material. Here, you just, the bishop is pinned, he's starting queen g3, you got no time. Game over, Karanke moves to 5.5 out of 6. And 
maybe he will be playing Stefan next move. How's Hikaru doing? He's on maybe board 10 or so. He's got a long ways to go before he's back in contention. What's going on in this end game? Bishop for two pawns. Two pawns. If it was one pawn... Sorry, I mean, if, if, if it's important that white has two pawns. It gives him more chances. So you take and you bring your king up and maybe you sacrifice. So take here and play king g5, right? Does that work? This might just be a draw. You just... What if I just bring my king to h8? Oh, I want to play bishop c4? Bishop c4? No, 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 you know what? What am I doing, guys? We've got to follow Stefan. Stefan is the deal. The real deal. Follow. What happened? I can't be, I can't be cheating on Stefan with, uh, with Naka. He's in first place, and look at this. Look at this position. The last move. e5, opening up the bishop, trading queens, and this pawn is cannot move. Oh man, white is as beautifully outplayed black here. He's up a pawn. He's ready to play bishop here. He's improving his pieces. This is a lost position. Stefan is about to move to six out of six. He's up a pawn. He just needs to convert this. And he's got 48 seconds to 20. This knight is dominated. This bishop. Controls this diagonal, controls this knight. Look at this gorgeous outpost uh, on b6, protected by the pawn on a5, protecting d7. Whatever Stefan's done, it is marvelous. The coordination here, this is, this is art. This is art. The one thing he needs to do now is to get his rooks into the game because everything else is, is good. Get those rooks into the game. We are about to see a perfect score heading into the seventh round. That is something. Bishop f8. That's okay. This pawn falls. Rook e4. Rook takes d4. That pawn falls. That's a second pawn. But first, rook e5. Okay, this pawn is hanging. What happens here? Rook c5? Rook c7? Is that the plan? Rook c5 and rook c7? I don't quite get his moves. He's getting low on time. C. Stefan's getting low on time. Can he maintain his good moves in time trouble? This is going to be a real test here. Azrov is being resilient. He wants to bring the knight to b7, go to d6, maybe jump to f5, and actually land the knight on e3. A nice little landing strip right on e3. Knight d6, knight f5, knight e3. Make that knight great again. But this knight on b6 is doing a great job. Stefan getting really long time. Oh, rook takes e6. What a nasty move. Oh, I did not see that one coming. Rook takes e6, threatening discovered attack. Stefan is dropping bombs on Azrov here. Whoa, this guy is a beast. I did not see that at all. This guy, jeez. Oh, that came out of nowhere. The tactics are real by, by, by Stefan. And and what look at this position. The king is trapped. This king cannot enter. This is this is this is a masterpiece. This is amazing. The king can't move in. He's just gonna bring his pieces in. Z Steph, uh, C Stefan on his way to six out of six. I'm sorry if I'm echoing, but this is this is just this is just pretty impressive. The problem is, is he gonna flag? He's got to win this pawn. This is an outside pawn. He's repeating moves right now. One thing I've noticed is, in, is uh, the quality of his moves is getting... He's, he's, he, he clearly is not a really good bullet player. He, he was playing a lot better earlier on. He's making a lot of mistakes here. Knight takes f4. Oh, no. For those cheering for, 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 for Stefan, it looks like he's going down here, guys. Guys, the, the pawn is about to queen. Ooh, I was getting really excited there. That rook takes e6 looked really nice. Z Stefan going down. That is unfortunate for uh, the the underdog. As a grandmaster, I uh, you know I, I I can't complain. I'm scared of these really strong candidate masters. I'm glad I'm glad in some ways that uh, that our title was protected. 
But uh, I can tell you one thing. This game was all C. Stefan. Rook takes e6. He's up two pawns here. Is he up two pawns? No, one pawn. He's up one pawn here. And he just failed to convert this position. Maybe knight c8 was a little bit too ambitious. Maybe knight d5. But uh, that, was, that was a close one. Who else is playing? Let's bring up the current standings after six rounds. Dimitri Andraken, first place, five and a half out of six. Kirill Aksienko also there. Karanke, another Russian. We have three Russians and a Belarusian in the first four spots. Uh, rounding out the top five is C. Stefan. And we have some IMs. We got Grandmaster Chandra from the U.S., but uh, we're going to have top board action with Andrekin in round seven. I'm going to leave a game on. I'm just going to grab a quick drink. And I will be right back. All right, I am back. We still got a game going on. These guys are both doing well, but um, V Pantev is on four and a half out of five. So this is still an important game for the tournament result, uh, tournament standings. But that last game took a lot out of me. Just seeing that is his play dropped off in time trouble. And that's the thing, um, you know, there's blitz and then there's the, the, the time scrambles and, and bullet. And if you don't have a lot of experience with that, it's going to be tough to keep pace with a grandmaster in an end game with a couple seconds on the clock. This is a draw. So Pantev moves to five out of five out of six. He's still got a chance. I, I think I think the winning score is going to be 9, 9 out of 10, which is really a big score. Um, so that's why I was saying I don't think Hikaru has a great chance to catch up, but he's doing his best. So round 7, title Tuesday, July 2017. Top seeds, Nakamura and Draken. Well... Now, Kamara did lose a critical game. He's trying to play catch-up here. Dmitry Andrekin, however, is in first place with 5.5 out of 6. He's playing his fellow Russian, uh, Kirill Alexienko. And uh, we have a Tarash. I beat my first chess master as black with this opening. This exact line is black. I beat my first uh, chess master when I was uh, 13. Good memories. They're playing some theory. Actually, they're playing it pretty quickly. This is a well-known variation. Bishop takes h7 is one move. Knight e2 is another. White just tries to play against this e6 pawn. Tries to, you know, maybe get a piece on e5. Plays against this French uh, pawn structure. Has a little bit more space. At the same time, there's an isolated pawn. Black straight off some pieces. Black's pretty solid. Maybe in an endgame, Black can try to play e5 himself. But um, I, I have a preference for white in these positions. But objectively, uh, I, I'm sure I'm Drake and knows where the pieces go. It's the real, the real evaluation is probably that it's close to equal, but it's preferable for white. This was a key move, by the way. I want to explain why. If you make a pass... If black made a pass, white was ready to trade bishop for the knight and then reroute this knight to e5 and try to play good knight against inferior bishop. 
So that's why Andre can move the knight right away. Didn't want to allow that peace trade. And that's a very common idea in the front. You want that knight, make that knight great, get that knight on e5. But these guys are trading off a lot of pieces here. And the more pieces I get traded off, the more I think black's position is getting okay. Not more than that, but, but very okay. And it's just, I mean, not headed towards a draw, but end game equality. And okay, maybe they'll play that on, maybe they won't. I still prefer white. Maybe, okay, I was thinking here maybe playing f4 f4 and playing queen e5 and trying to get more pawns on the dark squares i'm not sure queen here this one what i'm going to do I need to bring my king into the game okay i still like white i still like white andre we'll see what happens andre can What white needs to do here is probably play f3, stop this knight from getting into any of the squares, bring the king into e3, and try to get a second piece on, on e6. So king, the king is coming, notice h4, why h4? Stops black from playing g5, which means this knight on f4 is, is, is happy, it's going to stay there. He's protected himself, black can't play h6 because g6 is hanging, so h4 protects the knight. You bring the king in, yes, e5 is not possible because d5 is hanging. Oh. Don't take that move. And I might start considering playing g4. Maybe g4 and g5 now, putting more pawns on the dark squares. And he's done it. And he wants to play g5. g5, look at that. He's going to play g5, I think. You're not going to trade this off. You want to keep the bishops on the board because black's pawns are on light squares. So you have an idea. Maybe play g5, maybe play h5, play against the structure. So oh, he's traded. Okay, I probably wouldn't have done that. But let's see what his idea is. I still like White's position playing against this backwards pawn. But I think I would have kept the bishops on the board and tried to um, break through uh, against this uh, h7g6 formation. Still, this deep pawn controls two of black's pawns right now. And we have a nice idea. Knight d3, knight e5. Maybe bring the king up. White is still on the better side of this. This is this is some Russian endgame stuff. Maybe I'm not qualified qualified to comment on it. Some subtleties here. But no, um, white white has a clear plan, and the real question to me is I, I don't know what I would do as black. Do I try to play for e5? Do I just sit still, which is very hard uh, to do? Um, King here or f4, f4 and h5. Now you don't want to get the, you want to keep the pawns flexible. That's of course very important. You need to keep the possibility of a passed pawn. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna check on another game because that game might go for a while. Let's check on the other game here. How's Amon doing? Amon is playing Ivan Saric. And he's up in exchange. Hamilton. Five seconds to two minutes and 30. I think he's going for the, the record. Least amount of time. Every single round. Uh, sorry, the largest time deficit every single round. The prize goes to Amon Hamilton. He's down two minutes and 25 seconds here. Uh, he's up in exchange, but what is going on with that? That is stressful when you're playing with two seconds all the time. You're up in exchange here. So his position, he's got f5, f5, maybe f5. Yes, he's found it. f5, good stuff for him. Rookie two. The knight wants to go to c6 and attack over here. Rookie two. e4. If knight c6, rook d7, stopping knight e7 check, which is a fork. Tricky knights in time trouble, remember. But white has three pawns. Oh, this is, this is tough to figure out. You do not want to have three seconds here. Push the pawns. Oh, no. Sarich is going to push the pawns and just let Amon collapse with that time situation. King goes to c2, and the pawns continue to push.
push. I would, I would, I would just keep pushing. You only have one pawn here, and black can block it. Okay, I mean white can block it. King c3. Rook, rook over. Yes, yes, he wants to play e2. He's trying to play e2 here. He's getting a queen. Amon Hamilton is getting a queen to check, guys. He's getting a queen to check. It's a check. The, e, the, the queen in square is a check. This is intense. Knight c2, c2, knight here. We got rook c1 pinning the knight, still threatening it. Uh oh, this looks like a win for Hamilton. If Amon can keep his composure here, even though he's got eight seconds, I like his chances. King g5, king g5. Maybe you can take. Okay, you played king g5. This is a checking square. That's really critical here. In a race, who is going to get there? I think e2, e1. That's two moves. White cannot get a queen in two moves. And if white tries to block, knight, b knight b4, e2, knight c2. I got rook c1. And after king d2, rook takes c2, deflecting the king or winning the knight. C e2 on the board. We're seeing that on the board. Amon Hamilton is going to have a rook. And he can win this. He can win this. Rook takes and bring the king. Bring the king. Bring the king. You can bring the king. And you just made him. Oh, this is a win. This is a win for Hamilton. Either way. The, what a comeback. What a comeback by Mon Hamilton. He's going to pick up this pawn. White resigns. A likely continuation would be king takes e2. Rook takes g4. And the rook's just going to slide over to b4. Pick off this pawn. King covers this pawn. Hamilton wins with black with a massive time disadvantage. Big result there. And let's go back to one of the top boards. Karanke and Azarov. Both guys tied for first with five and a half out of six. But uh, it is Sergei Azarov who is up a full rook here. And I'm expecting a resignation. Azarov wins. He moves to six and a half out of seven. And we're going to see him play... The winner of Andrekin against Alexienko. And Andrekin here is down a pawn. Oh. How does this go? Knight takes c3. King d4. Is that a draw? That's a draw down a piece. Is that a draw down a piece? I think it is. Knight c3, king d4, and I walk my king over. Is Andrekin saving this position? Remember... Here, if you take the knight, you're actually losing the king and pawn end game. So he's sacrificing the piece. I think this is a draw. Shuffle the king. The king's not in time. No. Nope. No, nope, that's a draw. Wow. Dimitri Andraken. Holds it. So that means Sergei Azarov will be in clear first place. Six and a half out of seven. First place, but three rounds to go, and he's playing uh, one of the top seeds on Draken next. The chasing pack with six out of seven, you got, uh, besides uh, Vladimirovich, who is uh, Dmitry Andraken, you got Kirill Alexienko, you got Akshat Chandra, you have a couple players who I need to name. Who's this? Oh, yeah, Guillermo Vasquez, and uh, an unnamed German Grandmaster. Anonymous German Grandmaster. Well, there's a lot of Grandmasters from Germany, so I will not be guessing that one. Uh, can I get an update from the crowd? Oh, candidate master Stefan lost. He goes down to five out of seven. I've also received word that um, Hikaru lost, and he's finished with four points out of seven. So a bit of a collapse from the tournament's top seed today. My prediction clearly was way off. Any games remaining? We got one game left. We got the Australian internet fighting against Arthur Gabrielian. And Black is up upon and close to queening. This is the queening square. Would you sacrifice? I, I would. Yeah. It's going to be Rook and Bishop against Rook, most likely. Let's see how this technique plays out. 
No, I don't like the knight going there. The knight going there looks very suspicious. Uh oh. Looks like white's trying to lose here because now if you don't sac you didn't sacrifice, now rook check. Oh no, rook check was winning. Rook check was winning here. There was a win missed, but it still might be winning. This knight. This is no no check. Check on c7. What a blunder. What a blunder. He blunders the bishop. And it's gonna be a draw. Knight c4. Knight c4 is a draw. Or not okay. I, I'm not sure what's going on. Who's trying to win here? Okay, now it's going to be D1. It's going to be Rook against Rook. But I'm going to show you guys where the win was. There's a big opportunity missed by Black in this game. What? Oh, I mean, now all of a sudden, White is playing Knight against Rook. That was... This has been a strange turn of events in this game, but uh, uh, I think White is going to regret what just happened. Yes, Rook, Rook, yes. And now the Rook moves over here. Give a check. This is, this is game over, right? You just check on the side. You just check on the side. Game over. Oh, oh, no, it's not game over. Never mind, never mind. Oh, oh. I don't know this off the top of my head. It looks it looks bad, but maybe White holds on. My intuition was telling me this is lost, but maybe the knight and the king coordinate. It's a bit of a bit of a sloppy game at the end, but you can't blame these guys. They're under ten seconds. The thing is, you can pin the knight, but White can move the king up to defend, and Black's king can never get to c three, and provide support. What I really want to show is where they missed a win. While we are waiting for this to finish, I want to remind everyone that first prize in this title Tuesday is five hundred dollars. Second prize four hundred. Third to fifty. Fourth one fifty, and fifth gets the final placement prize of a hundred. And it is sponsored by Masterclass. Did you guys see that? I only saw that like a week ago, a week or two ago. Uh, Gary Kasparov is doing a Masterclass uh, for chess. And then I clicked on the Masterclass thing and then I saw, I guess, I guess Masterclass, they're getting uh, industry leaders or, or musicians or people, you know, uh, who are at the top to to do master classes so i don't know much about the company but uh i saw i saw a few recent videos so you get like the best people so what i saw was hans hans zimmer uh you know the guy who does the pirates of the caribbean soundtrack inception a lot of the movies i saw i saw that one the advertisement for that i like his music a lot i saw the most recent pirates the movie wasn't great but the music was always good So, what do you guys think? Who do you think is going to win the tournament? What are your thoughts on Nakamura dropping out after seven rounds? He started strong. Um, just a shaky, shaky uh, middle of the tournament. But he was playing uh, tough people. And we finally got the 50 move rule. So that's a draw. We're on to the next round. Once again. Now we're in round eight. 
some of the top pairings of the round. Andrekin against Azarov. Karanke against Fandarin. Alexenko against Chandra. And we have Azarov in first place with 6.5 out of 7. But a lot of people chasing him. So anything can happen still with three rounds to go. But uh, Azarov is in first place. Oh, what? We're, we're watching Stefan. Oops. I have to unfollow him. Uh, he's lost uh, board one. Who I'm I got to follow the real board one, Andrekin against Azarov. Andrekin is the highest rated player uh, uh, in pursuit, but Azarov has clear first. So I think this game is probably going to determine who wins. Uh, Andrekin has been leading. Uh, Andrekin and Azarov have started off strong, so they've played a lot of the people around them. After this matchup, whoever wins this matchup is, is not going to have the hardest pairings. They've already played most of their main rivals. So I think this is probably going to determine uh, who wins the event. Now, one thing I should say is prizes are actually shared, which is which is why if you start off badly, you can still catch up. At least the prizes are shared. There might be tie breaks for who gets the ribbon or, or whatnot, but the prizes are shared. And when it comes to cash... That's the most important. We got a Queen's Gambit client here. Pretty solid, safe uh, variation right now. I'm not sure what to say about it. It looks quite equal to me. I'm waiting for some action. White's just looking to develop. Black's looking to develop. Maybe take on. I wouldn't take on d4 because it gives the Queen. And this bishop some potential on the long diagonal but besides that oh he did it okay maybe he's going to take on c4 maybe take on c4 and trade everything is that the plan if you don't take on c4 white is threatening to take on d5 and create a isolated uh give black an isolated pawn okay so black did what i thought rook c8 bishop c6 trade everything i don't like andreken's opening but he is a very creative player and even from an equal position he can create chances but I don't think he can be particularly happy with what just happened. Bishop D C oh oh Bishop C six drops a pawn. Ah, tricky tricky. Bishop C six looks so natural, but it drops a pawn. So A six first, and then Bishop C six. That's my improvement. A six Bishop C six. Oh, he's sacrificing a pawn. Okay, he's going with my suggestion, which is probably a bad idea. Or there's a queen trap here. What happens? Queen takes queen takes a7. Why can't you take the pawn? What happens? He has an idea. He is sacrificing this pawn. He's baiting Andrekin into taking that. If Andrekin doesn't take this pawn, this is dead equal, guys. Queens are traded off. In fact, this bishop is good. No, Andrekin takes the pawn, and I'm really curious as to what happens here. Because I, I, when I was looking at this, I was like, queen d2? Okay, okay, some comp. Rook here. We're looking for comp. Compensation. Searching for compensation. Knight e4. Knight e4. Knight e4, rook d1. Knight e4 on the board. I'm guessing all the moves from both sides. Feels good. But uh, what is going on here? Rook d1, queen c2 maybe? Rook d1, queen c2. Yeah, rook d1, queen c2. Rook c1, queen d2. Queen c2. That's a perpetual. I'm not sure white can avoid that because black has massive threats all across the board. Look at that. Look at that. We may have a bizarre perpetual. Remember, rook. if the rook goes... Oh, well that, that was a slip. Get rid of the arrows. This might be a quick draw. This bishop can't move because then the queen can take on f2 with check. Oh, he, he avoids it. He avoids it. But this, this looks a little risky to me. So queen, queen takes d4. E takes d4. Bishop g5. I don't know. Things, things are very sharp here. Queen takes d4. E takes d4. Bishop g5. I see some tactics brewing. Queen takes d4. Is there another move here? Why is he taking so much time? Ah, there is another move. Okay. Uh, 
Black is down a pawn here. I did not like what happened in that middle game, but maybe there was actually nothing. Maybe sacrificing the pawn was a bad idea. Somehow Dimitri Andrekin here has unraveled. He's got the queens off the board. He's trying to get into an endgame with an extra queenside pawn, which might be winning if he can mobilize it. Giving his king some breathing room. He wants to play king f2. King f2 coming next. Maybe knight d1. Trade off this good bishop of blacks. Mm, critical game here on Drake. Whoa! Knight takes b3. Tactics! Rook here. And look at that. Does this one work? He spent some time on it. I'm inclined to trust him. You have two threats. Bishop takes c3 and rook takes e2. Or rook takes b2. At first glance, I don't think you can stop both. I don't think you can stop both, guys. Look at that. Sergei Azrov with some fast tactics here. Bishop c3 and rook takes e2. Or rook takes b2. You can't stop, can't protect both bishops in one move. Some good stuff from Azrov here. He is in clear first. He was down upon. He needed to hold the lead. And this tactic might be the saving resource. How do you defend both? You don't. You don't. That was nice. That was crisp. Bishop takes c3. Rook takes e2. Okay. That's still a game here. And it's still not a draw. It's not just opposite bishops. There's two rooks on the board for each player. So there are still chances, but this is definitely equal. And he's up on time. He's going to put, put, it, put his pawn on e5. He's got to be happy with how things are going. Sergei Azarov in clear first there, trying to hold Dmitry Andrekin with black. I'm expecting rook d8. Okay, rook a8, preparing to double rooks on the second rank. And, and checkmate white. You got you to trade off the rooks. Forcing Andrekin to trade off which is going to diminish his winning chances. And we're going to get closer and closer to a standard drawn opposite bishop endgame. I'm impressed by Azrov. I'm calling this a draw and I'm moving to another game because we've got people nipping at their heels. Karanke against Fandarin. And Karanke here is up in exchange and three pawns. He's well on his way to winning. Queen here and queen e4 looks good. Or knight here and queen f7. Yep. Karanke is going to move to 6 and f out of 8. He is a very, very strong IM. As you can tell by the ring. Queen f7. And queen g8 is unstoppable. That is a KO for the Russian. Well, they're both Russian. There's a lot of Russians in this event. He may play on board one next round. Who else is nearby? You know who else is nearby? Amon Hamilton. He's got 5 and f out of 7. And just as I joined the game, Amon lost on time. But from what I can see, it looks like he just blundered here. Bishop c4, queen c4, and he's down a minute and a half. And knight c4 runs into rook takes d1 checkmate. So Amon unfortunately goes down to Renato Terry Luhan from Peru. Who else is there? Let's go back to board one. Did they agree to a draw? Yes, they repeated. Uh, it was a draw as expected. Sergei Azarov, 7 out of 8. Still retains first place. Good result for him. Nice tactics. We'll check another big game. Chandra against Alexienko. Chandra's got a bishop for two pawns. And the one pawn he has is on the right color. So... King up. This looks winning for white. White's got the right pawn. And he's going to win these two pawns by, by, bur by moving his king in and using the bishop to cut off black's king. Yep, check. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Immobilizing the pawns. Immobilizing the pawns. And now he's going to bring his king to f5. This is game over. Akshat Chandra is going to play king d5 or a4. Either one works. Okay, this also works. He's going to move back and forth until this king has to move. And as soon as this king moves, king e5, king f5, king takes pawn. Oh, that's a nice idea. King here, but it doesn't stop 
white. You got bishop g4 here, king has to move. You pick off this pawn. You bring your bishop, tether it to the a2 pawn, and your pawn is on the right color. Akshat Chandra moves to 7 out of 8, and he is tied for first. The teenage grandmaster from the U.S., the St. Louis resident. 7 out of 8, and he might play Andraken or uh, Azarov next. Actually, probably Azarov. So some, some changes in the standings with two rounds to go. Some remaining games. Also, Guillermo. His username is Jenna217. Guillermo Vasquez from Paraguay is on 7 out of 8. And it says his tie breaks are the best. So we've got three players all of a sudden in first place. Totally up for grabs. A couple remaining games left. Let's click on one of them. We got Croatia against Ukraine here. We got a closed position. The players repeat, despite black being up in exchange, the rooks don't have any space, any open files. They agree to a draw. All right. Anything else? Ooh, queen against queen and pawn. Where is the mon? Amon is playing in the tournament. He is on five and a half out of eight. He's had an intense event. So white needs to just get this pawn down the board. Queen check. King here or king here. Okay, now queen g2. Pin the pawn. No. Why is he not pinning the pawn? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Push. Push. Looks like this pawn is about to queen. I'm not sure you can really stop that. Check. Black's king is very close. Oh, this feels lost to me. And there we go. Queen d7. Queen d7. If you go check, I can block. Oh, he missed it. Queen d7 here wins the game on the spot. He didn't quite see it, <laughs> but hopefully he, he, he'll have another chance. So a win missed by, by White there. And he finds this one. Check, blocks a check, and gives a check. Trades the queen off, and he's going to get a queen. So he finally does it. And I think now we're ready for round nine. What are your predictions? Three people left. Title Tuesday. Who's going to get the $500? Oh, I'm still following candidate Master Stefan. He's a tough one to, to forget. Board one, we got Guillermo Vasquez against Dimitri Andraken. Paraguay against Russia. On board two, we have Akshat Chandra playing against Azarov. We'll only watch one game. Uh, and I'll pick, I'll pick uh, uh, Chandra because we haven't covered his uh, games. He is in... Uh, shared first and he's playing yeah we'll follow this game we have a Tarash well, we've seen this one before mm, I think the players are reciting theory here Bishop c4, castle, a3, b4. How does it, I don't, I, I don't play this line myself. Queen e2, b3, bishop b2. White has easy development, uh, good pieces. Black is solid. That pretty much sums up the French. Well, this line of the French. The French can get pretty sharp, but the Tarash uh, has some quieter variations let's check the other game we'll check back on that one this game looks a bit sharper it's open um, pawns have been traded and it's like a bit of a it looks a bit like a king's Indian attack here 
or something happened where white white's got this weakness on d3 that black wants to attack at the same time maybe white's going to do something against black's king looks like a king's getting attack however on draken is certainly ahead here after c4 it's clear that black's initiative was quicker You have to deal with this start right away. No, no, this is definitely, like you can tell by the time on Draken already up. 50 seconds here. He's getting ready to crash through here. Open up, you know, get this past pawn down the board. Ooh. Is this what actually what happened? Rook d1. Take on d3. Yep, that's a pawn. That's a beautiful pawn. Rook takes d3. I'll even play knight b4. I'm not even going to take the rook. Knight b4 pre moves pretty much. Knight c2. Oh, this is already lost. Not only these are great double pawns because they restrict all of white's pieces, but this knight is going to jump on c2 with, uh, yeah, lethal intent. Knight c2. Knight c2. Rook c8. All the moves come with time. On Draken here, looks like he's crushing Vasquez, but you know what? On Draken's actually a half point behind the leaders, so he does need to play catch up. And even if he wins this game, it doesn't mean he'll be in first place. So knight c2 wins the exchange, but he doesn't have to go for it. He does it. Okay, why not? You're up in exchange. Queen a5. He plays bishop b7, attacking this knight, and the rook is still hanging. So renewing the threat. White is in the tank here, down a minute and 40 seconds. But the tactics are just not working. You got one rook hanging here, you got one piece hanging. Pick your poison. I think it's going to be the exchange. Knight g5, I like it. If you're going to go down, go down swinging, go down with the attack. And I'm not sure what that move does, but it looks aggressive. And it looks confusing. So Andrekin calmly takes the rook. White plays e6, he's going down, making it complicated, trying to provoke a blunder. He doesn't want to just be ground down in endgame, down material. Okay, some trades. Bishop takes looks good. If knight takes, I'll take on g2. You take on e6. Oh, nah, it's sharp. Take on g2, take on e6. That is a little sharp, isn't it? I see a variation here, by the way. Take on here. King h8, queen f5. Queen f5 is a big threat, so black had to take. Oh, this. Oh, queen d5. That is a class move. Queen d5, look at that, attacks the knight, attacks the queen, protects the bishop, and gets, makes sure that black's king doesn't get exposed to an attack. Queen d5 is the move. That, that is a beautiful move. Queen d5. Now it's game over. Black is up a piece right now, and he's getting material off the board. Queen d5 shuts out everything. You got bishop h3 with a, a mating net. In case the queen moves out of the way, this is lights out. Queen d5 coordinates everything. Bring the knight back, and he's up a piece. On Draken, on Draken. Look at that. The bishop comes back. He's up a piece here. Shouldn't have any trouble converting. He can even chop this pawn off. But he's going to move to 7.5 out of 9. Nice how everything coordinated. Let's go back to Azarov against Chandra. This game is heated up. We've traded off some pieces. It's bishop against knight. Two rooks and queen on the board. And Chandra's most recent move is queen g4. Offering a queen exchange, which is hard to refuse because there's also mating threats against the pawn on g2. So Azarov is saying, I'm going to play rook e2. I'm going to use my queen side majority. Maybe c4, b3. But what, what am I also going to do? I'm going to play king g3. So king h2, king g3. And you're not going to have a good way to defend this pawn. Because with my knight on g5, you can never really touch this pawn because e6 is weak. They agree to a draw. Whoa. 
I'm a little surprised by that, but uh, maybe the position is okay. Or I, I'm not sure if they think the position is okay, or they're you know they're in the lead and you know it's it's a tough situation and it draws a good result for both. Because I was looking at some logical moves. Rook t4 came up. Rook here, king here, and I thought white was better here, and I tend to prefer white here, but it's not anything like really significant. Still, the players, you know, they maintain first place, but now Andre can catches up. So seven and a half out of nine is now the score. Let's do a refresh here. What pops up? Yep, seven and a half out of nine. What else is going on? Let's follow these two players. These are both strong grandmasters. Uh, white is uh, Rauf Mamadov on the Azer Azeria national team, and black is Gregory Oparin. He's like 20 years old, rated over 2600. And in this position, we have a race. Who gets there first? Aman is also playing. How's Aman doing? Is he going to be down two minutes on the clock? Uh, Aman is down. Aman is playing Jeff Reinberg. I know a lot of Jeffs. I don't know this Jeff, but I know that this position is busted. And Amon goes down. He is down a minute, and you can't stop this pawn from queening. Jeff Reinberg is a brand. These are his first blitz games. That's a that's a that's a strong national master. I've never heard of him, but uh, he just beat Amon. Pretty convincingly here. I mean, that's a lost end game. All right. So who shall we follow? Well, there aren't too many ladies playing in the event, but here we have one, Adriana Nikolova from Bulgaria. Adriana, uh, she is playing white here. She's got these double pawns which are actually kind of cool because with this bishop, black can't really get access in. You can't go here, can't go here, can't go here. So she's on the better side of this. Most likely it's a draw, however, but they're both a long time. It's an all Bulgarian affair, actually. Bulgaria against Bulgaria. So Kosteniak was also in the event. I believe in one of the recent Title Tuesdays, one of the prizes was a trip to the Isle of Man tournament for the top female player. So I'm not sure if that's at stake here or not, but there were some really delicious prizes being offered recently. King F, okay, there, looks like this is gonna be a draw. And D5 played wants to put the king over, but, uh, I can't imagine this being winning. Unless, wait, the king goes to c7? No. King e5 is right in time. King e5 is in time. And black's just going to shuffle this bishop back and forth. White's king has to stay here. Otherwise, d6 falls. So they're just going to repeat. This is a draw, but a well-played well played draw. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. So one more round to go. Let's bring up the standings for everybody before we hit that final round. First place is held by three grandmasters. Sergei Azarov of Belarus. Dmitry Andrekin, the super grandmaster from Russia. And Akshat Chandra, one of America's top juniors. Rounding out the top five, we got Jenna and Karanke. Two strong IMs from Paraguay and Russia, respectively. There's quite a few other players with seven out of nine. Chances are, though, they have a chance. Um, they're going to have a chance at a cash prize, which is top five, but it's unlikely that you know they can get first place. If any, you know, they're they're a half point behind with only one round to go.
And the games have started. Okay, here we go. Round 10, final round, title Tuesday, July 2017. Dmitry Andrekin has been leading the event most of the way. Not just him, though, also Sergei Azarov. We also, uh, here we have Aksha Chandra, who's, I think, won quite a few games in a row to position himself uh, very nicely. He's got white in the final game. They're playing an exchange Slav. The question is, is, is this going to be a quick draw? Or is he playing the exchange Slav to grind out on Draken? Other game being played with um, huge implications. Sergei Azarov is also in first place. He's, he's really been leading the event most of the way. He's playing block against Wonderful Time. Uh, who has, He's a half point behind. He's a very strong blitz player. I think this is a very even matchup. So pretty much at this point, anything can happen. And we'll see what happens here. They got a Queen's Gambit declined uh, on going over here. Let's check on Chandra against Andraken, which is going to be static. I mean, look at the pawn structure. There's no tension there. It's going to be a maneuvering game. Uh, but the question is, are these players looking to share a prize or are they going for the 500? What would you do? You draw with seven and a half out of nine. You ensure, if they all draw, you know, would you know you ensure at least a chunk of first place. You go for that win. You could, you know, fall out of the winner's circle or win clear first. We're gonna see how ambitious they are. Black has just conceded a protected passed pawn. I think B four just is screaming to be played in this position. The reason he's hesitant about it is because of bishop to b2 after b4. Forking the rook and the pawn on a3. f3 played. Yes, I've been hanging around Ben a lot, Ben Feingold, so f3. Never play f3. No, f3 is a fine move. It does weaken the e3 square, though. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. I'm starting to like Black's position for whatever reason. Maybe because I think this knight is an excellent blockader and Black is going to play e5 and generate a lot of counterplay in the center. This passed pawn, if it's blocked, it's okay, it's a passed pawn, but it's not really uh, a, any serious advantage. Black, however, with this uh, mobile pawn center, that's something. Okay, Andrekin preparing to play knight c4, looking to disconnect. This rook on c1 from prote protection of the c5 pawn. Also threatening knight b3, forking the queen and the rook. I'm starting to like Andraken's position for whatever reason, guys. Dimitri Andraken here is up a minute, and maybe that already can, can tell you that black is more comfortable in this position. Yeah, we got a question. EU or NA? That's, you could summarize it like that. So... Knight c4, knight b3, oof, two threats. I like, this is just a great bishop on, on f6. Okay, well, knight c4 looks good. Knight c4 looks good. We'll check back on this game. Let's go to board two. Azrov, wonderful time. And this is better for white. Bishop pair open position, but he's down a minute. When I say better, I mean he's a little bit better. Um, but black is very solid. Queen h5 is a great move. He's starting knight a5, winning the bishop, also uh, opening up the diagonal. I like queen h5 a lot. This knight on f3 might come under fire. Maybe queen g6 and prepare net to, to, to put some threats on g2. Maybe knight e4. How's 94? How are you going to deal with that move? Azarov is up a minute. He can try to leverage that into something and get a little ambitious here with black. All right. Rotating back to Chandra on Draken. And knight c4 was played on the board. Queen c1 with the idea of rook takes c5, b3. Saying b3 and I win a piece. Well, you might win a piece, but you might be giving up a lot of pass pawns. Oh, knight e5. Gorgeous, gorgeous move by Andraken. Rook takes c5, runs to the knight, takes d3. Recovering the material because it also forks the queen and the rook. If bishop takes e5, black's going to throw on rook takes c2 and then take on e5. He's going to be up a pawn. Andraken is winning this game using the tactics. He is doing well here. 
Bishop takes g6 works, but the position is still very good for black no matter what. e3 is weak, pawn, the pawn zero weak. This is still very good for Andraken. But Chandra did find the best line that he's not, not down upon. Uh, what do I see though? Well, black's missing an h-pawn, white's missing a d-pawn. That's a critical presence in the center. Whoa! Andraken just blunders the exchange. One of the most basic tactics in chess. The discover check. Andraken just hallucinated and this game has just been reversed. This is a winning position for Aksha Chandra. Look at that. Rook c8. Just Maybe it's because he didn't have the h-pawn. He just forgot about it. And he just blunders one of the most elementary patterns in chess. Andraken now. He's up 20 seconds. But uh, what a turnaround. An American could take this title Tuesday. He's got 45 seconds to come up with a good plan to trade off pieces and put Andraken away. So he gives up a pawn to get his bishop on a good diagonal. One thing I'll say is Andraken has a really, really good pawn structure here. He's a very resourceful defender. And it's going to take a great, great technical effort to convert this easily. Black has a pawn. Black's got a great structure. It's it's not elementary anymore. Let's quickly check on these this board to Azarov. Azarov up in exchange, which means he's putting pressure on board one. Sergey Azarov is up twenty seconds. He is up in exchange. If he wins, he's going to have eight and a half out of nine, a guaranteed first place, whether it's shared or clear. That'll put a lot of pressure on board one because board one still has drawing chances. Sergey Azarov needs to convert this. So we have two games where the players up in exchange, Azarov and Chandra. They can control their own destiny here. Uh-huh. G. Is he going to play G4? G4, G5? G4, G5 looks good. G4, G5? G4, G5? How many times? Oh, and he finally did it. Look at that. That's going to be tough to meet. That is going to be a tough one to meet. G5 is strong. If you play G5, I play H4. I just continue. In, in fact, this, this... How do you stop that? How do you stop G5? H4. Vamos. If king here, I can just take. Or even play H5 check. You can't stop it. Oh, you can. Because you're on Draken. And you have a perpetual with queen g3 and queen h3. After f takes g5. Very resourceful. But you know what? It doesn't st stop it. Oh, I'm confused by that move. Keep the knight pinned. Pinned to win. Akshat Chandra is messing up here, guys. Why don't you take? What am I missing? Just take. What am I missing? It looks like Chandra is choking. Queen g3. Queen g3. Is it a mate? Is it a mate over here on g7? Why not knight takes pawn? Knight takes pawn as well. Knight takes pawn. This, this game is wild. I mean, I think this rook is about to fall. Queen takes pawn, that's with a check, that's with a check. And you can move the knight out of the way. Yes? Anyone can win this one. They are just trying to win uh, time, with uh, make moves, build some time. G4, cold-blooded move. Knight takes pawn, happening. Knight takes pawn, is going to be on the board. He's going to have a knight and three pawns. Knight and three pawns is about to appear. Queen d4 check, knight f6. Knight f6 on the board. That's a knight and two pawns. Both kings are in the open. This is anybody's ball game. Trying to play rook g5. No, king g6 blocks it. Chandra or Andraken. This one is going down to the wire. Rook f4 is a good move. Check. Queen has to take. Knight takes. King up. Oh, this looks like a good endgame for Akshat Chandra. The queens are off the board. The danger is gone. Maybe rook g5 and just pick off the pawns like that. Akshat Chandra here. 
Does Andre can have any more tricks in his bag? There are some things missed by both sides. So it was mutual. King up. King up. Okay, he's just going for the B pawn. Well, this could still be a draw. The question is, can you keep this pawn? You have to keep this pawn. Knight against rook is a draw. Uh-oh. Looks like it's we're headed towards a draw, guys. The king is coming. on Draken. Look at that. On Draken survives. And is Sergei Azrov going to be the winner? Knight against rook. I don't know what happened in the other game. If he won or not. But this is going to be a draw. I'm guessing. <laughs> Wild draw. Both sides missed moves. And... Uh, we're going to see who ends up on top in the end. Might have a huge tie for first or clear first. But knight against rook is really hard to mess up. Knights are very easy to play with in, in blitz. A bishop is a lot more clumsy. They're stuck on their same color. Knights are tricky. So this is going to be a pretty elementary draw. I can promise you that. And what happened on board two? Is board two over? Sergey Azrov lost on board two. He got flipped here. So he all of a sudden falls way back and is. Oh, that is tough. So this game really is for first place between Chandra and Andraken. But uh, as I said, this is going to be a draw. Andraken, I've played him a lot. He's got good end games, no issues there. A mouse slip or a disconnect is the main way I could see him lose this. Check. We're just waiting for the 50 move rule. Let's look at the live standings right now in the tournament. The live standings. This game still pending. Oh, we got the draw. We got the draw. Let's look at the standings. They agreed to a draw. Let me let me close that. The players have agreed to a draw. Well, the pieces got traded off after King C5, Rook C6. That game is over. Let's refresh everything and bring up the standings. This is the final round of Title Tuesday. Ten rounds of three-minute blitz. And here we go. A four-way tie for first. On Draken. Chandra. Karanke makes a final push to finish with 8 out of 10. And wonderful time. Doesn't appear on the screen. I'm going to bring that up. Also caught them. So a four-way tie for first with 8 out of 10. I was way off in my predictions because I predicted 9 out of 10 would be the winning score. I also predicted Hikaru Nakamura was going to win the tournament. But uh, let's bring up those final results. The top 10 in this July title Tuesday. Number four, wonderful time. Uh, from Vietnam, fifth, Sergey Azarov. He was leading the tournament pretty much from the get-go. He lost the final round, and that means he shares 100 bucks with one, two, three, four, five people. Sergey Azarov gets $20 despite having a wonderful tournament. Uh, Gregory Oparin is there, Rauf Mehmedov, Renato, Terry Luhan, MSB2. Those guys round out the top five. Further down the standings, we see 7 out of 10, former Women's World Champion Alexander Kostenyak. Chess Queen is her username, 7 out of 10, pretty good result there. Ali Xenko here, 7 out of 10, he was leading uh, a lot of the event. Anyways, that's it. That was Title Tuesday, July 2017, hosted by Grandmaster Eric Hansen. If you liked what you saw, Make sure to follow me on Twitter right there. You see it says Hanson Chess. It says Hanson Chess. And that's my Twitter. Otherwise, I stream on Twitch. I'm on YouTube. You'll see me again soon. Have a good Tuesday, everyone. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next month for August's Title Tuesday. Take care, everyone.